period, come back briefly tomorrow morning and then dissipate again tomorrow afternoon. It never completely leaves the region uh, into the start of the upcoming weekend. But by Sunday afternoon with winds out of the south, that'll deflect a lot of the smoke back north of the border up into Canada. But again, between now and then, there still will be a light smoky haze uh, that will be overhead, but nothing nearly as severe as what we had yesterday. Uh, we do uh, have that air quality alert, though, in effect through midnight tonight across the entire viewing area. We're also tracking some showers for a change for today. Low pressure center just to the east of Maine. We have moisture pinwheeling around that storm system. Couple showers dropping uh, north to south through our region. Most of these showers on the light side. One briefly heavier shower approaching Watkins Glen now from the north, uh, but that expected to dissipate shortly, and we're left with variably cloudy skies through the overnight period. Temperatures have backed off into the 50s, so it is a bit on the cool side. 57 in Elmira. Winds out of the south five miles an hour. And then for tomorrow, a lot like today, we'll have some peaks of sunshine here and there, but also the threat for a couple showers and maybe even a rumble of thunder in a spot or two. Temperatures only in the low and mid 60s. Nice warming trend, though, as we go through the weekend. I'll let you know how warm it gets and whether or not the weekend will be dry coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Joe, thank you. Well, a horsehead's man has pleaded guilty to his role in the brutal torture and murder case in Elmira in 2021. According to the Chabon County District Attorney Weedon Wetmore, Thomas Beauvert pleaded guilty to second degree murder and the death of Juan Jose Gote. Gote was tortured and killed by a group of four men in January of 2021. He was dumped and left to die in a remote area of Pennsylvania. Wetmore says Beauvert's guilty plea satisfies the other charges against him. He'll face a sentence of 18 years to life when sentenced in September. Last month, another man involved in the case, Malik Weems, pleaded guilty to the same charge. Two other men, Eddie Marte of New York City and a then 17-year-old, are still awaiting trial. Well, Brand Park's pool will not be the same by the end of 2023. New plans are in the works for the property. WENY Sam Shapiro shares what the future for the historic pool looks like right now. After years of discussing the possibility of bringing a piece of history back to the city of Elmira, the Brand Park Memorial Pool has been deemed beyond repair and is expected to be torn down by the end of this year. Originally built in 1926, the Brand Park Pool served the community as a municipal pool, but after flooding in the 1940s, the pool was rebuilt and dedicated to World War I and II veterans. The Art Deco style pool was designed by architect Wesley Blitz. Families far and wide created lifelong memories swimming there until the pool was closed for good in 2006. Since that time, it's gone downhill, and of course, the longer you let something sit vacant, the more it deteriorates. So finally, um, just recently, we talked about it's going to have to come down. Um, so finally this year, we said this is going to be the year that we're going to get quotes. So we're going to have to take it down. Over the years, there have been grassroots fundraising efforts in hopes of saving and restoring the historic pool for the community. But the structure is now so far gone, Mandel feels it's too little too late. You know, when I first took office, I talked to community development to see if there was any way to raise a couple million dollars. It just wasn't there. And um, so now it's at a point now that it's just there's no way it costs it costs multi-million dollars to, you know, do something with this pool. Mendel says plans to repurpose the property as a splash pad is already in the works. He hopes it will encourage families to create new memories at Brand Park in the future. Now, Mayor Mendel hopes construction on the new splash pad will get underway this year, but expects it to be creating new memories for Elmirans by next summer. Reporting in Elmira, Sam Shapiro, WENY News. Well, the Montour Falls Fire Department Festival kicked off just a few minutes ago, and WENY's Alexander Duran is live to show us what is happening on the carnival grounds, and it looks like she is taking a ride. Hey, Alexandra. 
Renata, I'm reporting to you live from the top of a Ferris wheel for the first day of this three day festival and the grounds. They're officially open. As you can see, my cameraman is looking out here at the grounds right now. People can look forward to some live entertainment. It's going to be happening every night. If you look beyond ducks and darts, you're going to see the variables they're playing tonight and they're tuning their instruments right now, playing a lot of Beatles covers, getting ready for everyone. And tomorrow they're going to have Bad Bear and Still Kicking is going to be playing on Saturday night. And again, this mid way is filled with carnival rides and games for all ages. Uh, did I mention there's a lot of delicious food and tomorrow there's going to be a chicken barbecue that people can eat in it tomorrow and Saturday. There's also going to be a cornhole tournament on Saturday for families to compete in. Also happening on Saturday, there's going to be a parade and that's going to start at 5 p.m. And this break, this parade is going to have lots of marching bands, firemen, you know, just a lot of floats, antique cars and a whole lot more. So people can look forward to that. And again, this festival just got started a few minutes ago and it's going, go, going to be going on until Saturday night. And if you want to hear more about this fun festival, just tune in tonight at WENY News at 11 o'clock. We're not all send it back to you. All right, Alexandra, good to know you're not afraid of heights. Well, we are continuing to follow developments regarding the future of Elmira's first arena. The now former operator of the arena, Steve Donner of Mammoth Sports and Entertainment, told WEMY News last week he has turned the keys of the facility back over to the Chemung County IDA. Last month, the IDA announced it was seeking to terminate its lease with Mammoth less than two years into a five-year term. The arena is now vacant. However, today, the arena posted on its Facebook page, stay tuned for some exciting information and the future of First Arena. WEMY News reached out to the Chemung County IDA today about what this could mean. They did not respond to our outreach. Donner told WNY News last week, though, people who had purchased tickets for next month's mammoth hockey season have been sent a letter informing them of their options. And Mammoth is working with Tickets.com to refund any ticket sales from a concert scheduled for later this month that was canceled. The site of a former friendlies in the village of Riverside is getting a new life. Construction is underway on a new shell of a building where friendlies once stood on West Pulteney Street. The mayor of Riverside tells WNY News the new building will be home to a well now urgent care as well as a Starbucks location. The Starbucks will also have a drive through construction on the building is set to be complete in November. While the smoke has been clearing out of the Twin Tiers, other parts of the Keystone State still dealing with hazy conditions. We'll take you to Harrisburg to see how the state capitol is responding. And we'll tell you why a major Supreme Court ruling on voting rights has stunned some court observers. And we'll continue to dodge a couple showers this evening and for tomorrow. I'll let you know what's in store for our weekend coming up right after the break. But first, let's step outside, take a live look at our Crystal City Sky Cam overlooking Market Street in downtown Corning. You're watching WENY News at 6. Check, check, one, two, three, four, five. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five.
from WNY News, this is First Morning Weather. Welcome back. It's been a relatively cool day today across the Twin Tiers. Overcast conditions, still a little bit of a light smoky haze out there, but uh, uh, much better than what we were dealing with yesterday. Not completely out of the woods just yet. I don't think it'll be until the upcoming weekend that we lose a little bit more of that hazy, smoky condition there as the winds shift out of the south and a lot of that smoke will retreat back to the north up into Canada. But we are tracking a couple showers under the cloud cover and much needed rain for our region. Uh, some areas have picked up a quick tenth of an inch here and there as we track showers dropping in from the north. Uh, still under an air quality alert area wide through midnight tonight. Uh, still up in the air whether or not this gets extended into tomorrow. But our computer guidance here in terms of our smoke forecast for tomorrow showing a lot of the oranges and the reds kind of pushing down towards the south and west. This is at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Still looking at a little bit of smoky haze around our region, but again, not nearly as intense as it's been over the last 24 hours. And then as we push into the weekend, uh, we'll see the colors of uh, the greens and the yellow. So a little bit higher up on our scale here, starting to increase again from the west. So that's why I say even into the start of the upcoming weekend, not 100% clear from that smoky haze. But once we get into Sunday and the wind shift more predominantly out of the south, that should help deflect a lot of the leftover smoke at that point up to the north. Also, we have an upgrade to our drought status. And uh, we've been upgraded to a moderate drought across portions of our area, especially to the south and west of Elmira. But really, area-wide, uh, we're looking at quite a rainfall deficit, uh, as much as three to three and a half inches in spots since just the 1st of May. So we're in desperate need of rain, and, well, we got a little bit of that for today. Most of it's been very spotty in nature, and it's not going to do much to put a dent in our ongoing drought situation. But again, we'll take what we can get. Some areas reporting about a tenth of an inch of rain, and there are some isolated downpours here coming down Seneca Lake near the Hector and Burdett areas, approaching Watkins Glen from the north and then south and west of there uh, over towards the Camp Bell area and uh, Thurston and near Bath. We're looking at some isolated showers heading your way. Now our future track for tomorrow Still showing some spotty showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder in a couple spots as we go through the afternoon. So very similar to what we had during the day today. Not a washout, but some showers will tend to come and go. And the overcast conditions and spotty showers will keep temperatures a bit below average for this time of year. Highs tomorrow, low and mid 60s and rainfall amounts between now and tomorrow evening generally about a tenth of an inch. There may be a couple localized spots a little bit higher than that. Still a shower threat on Saturday, but it's isolated. Look at the temperature, though, up to 78 degrees, and we'll get some partial sunshine by Sunday. Here are the southerly winds and temperatures even warmer. 83 are forecast high, so summer-like temperatures returning just in time for the weekend. Today we forecast 63, the best we could do for a high temperature. 61. We head down to 43 for a low tonight with a couple more showers possible, otherwise partly cloudy conditions. 64. Tomorrow's five degree guarantee. Showers remain in the forecast. That'll carry over into Saturday, but with warmer temperatures, 83 on Sunday. And then Renata, we hold those temperatures up to around 80 degrees going into early next week. So we see a nice recovery in the temperature department as that smoke has really been keeping the temps a lot lower. That's right. They have been. And again, the air quality improving mm -hmm. as we move forward, but again, not 100% out of the woods just yet. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Well, according to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, the south central and eastern regions of the Commonwealth are currently most impacted from those Canadian wildfires, so things are improving here in the Twin Tiers. Let's head down to Harrisburg, for the, where the air quality for the region has been very unhealthy in recent days. WENY Pennsylvania Capital correspondent Brendan Scanlon is standing by with the latest. Brendan, how is it down there? Hey there, Renata. Good evening. Yeah, it's really not too bad. I can actually look up and see some blue in the sky for the first time in a few days. I'm going to step out of frame here just so you can get a nice live shot looking down toward the Susquehanna River again right outside the state capitol where the visibility and air quality have been very poor leading up to today.
Despite air quality concerns in a hazy Harrisburg, many are still taking advantage of an otherwise beautiful day. It hasn't really altered our plans much. Chris Rafferty stopped in Harrisburg on his way from upstate New York to Maryland. He recalls wildfire smoke in the past, but not quite like this. We did experience some of the uh, wildfires from out west in the states. So it was similar, but not this severe. Even though he won't be rolling with the windows down, he still plans on enjoying his trip and the stops along the way. Keeping the windows up, but that's usually how we do it when we're on the highway. But some experts warn driving with the windows up will become more common. Climate change is real. The impacts of it are occurring in ways that we probably didn't expect. John Dernbach is a professor of environmental law and sustainability at Widener University. He says Canada has the largest intact forest ecosystem in the world and that they're also experiencing record high temperatures. It's not like every single forest fire is caused by climate change, but the scientific community says, well, look, climate change makes fires more frequent, more intense, and extends the length of the fire season. So it's all worse because of that. He says if temperatures continue to rise, wildfires will become more common and more severe in the future. It's not like we're going to get to a point and the temperature is just going to stop rising unless, unless we do something really serious about reducing our, our greenhouse gas emissions. And now up until about three or four o'clock this afternoon here in Harrisburg, we were at a purple air quality index, which is very unhealthy. We have since been bumped down to a red, which is still unhealthy. And like I said, it seems to be improving, but I am no expert. I'll leave that up to Joe Varis and the team up there to determine. For now, reporting live outside the state capitol in Harrisburg for WENY News, I'm Brendan Scanlon. Renata, back to you.